Hello, I'm Charles Forrester. I'm a uh, principal analyst on the aviation desk with Jane's. I'm here with uh, Paul Smith from BAE Systems at DSCI 2019, and we're here to talk about the Typhoon. And so, Paul, I wonder if you could talk us through some of the uh, changes that have been going through the program lately. We've got the, the Centurion systems coming online, and uh, also some of the weapon systems and sensors that that, that is involved. I'm a recently retired Typhoon pilot. Uh, Centurion delivered a range of uh, weapons and sensor upgrades to the jet. In particular, it delivered the Meteor long-range smart weapon uh, with a smart data link, as well as the Storm Shadow deep strike weapon uh, and the Brimstone 2, uh, uh, very precise, low collateral, uh, very good against moving targets missile, particularly uh, uh, land targets, but also in the maritime region. Um, in terms of what that means to the pilot, uh, if you uh, look at the imagery here, then that's imagery through a Striker 2 helmet and shows a typical night close air support uh, uh, engagement. So with the Striker 2, you now have a wide field of view uh, digital camera that you can very quickly designate targets uh, and uh, designate multiple targets. And that's all fully integrated into the weapon system. So as you look into the cockpit, where you designated with the helmet, now the laser pod, and we're integrating the Lightning 5, next, latest generation laser pod, can very quickly uh, see the target. The, the troops on the ground who you're supporting can see that on a ruggedized uh, uh, tablet. Uh, and very quickly you can get targets down range. So Brimstone very effective in close air support, but it's that range of sensors. And we've also updated the human machine interface, how the pilots interact with the aircraft. So that means the pilot workload is reduced and the pilot can uh, more easily do have an awareness of the air-to-air -air picture, as well as engage multiple targets in the air-to-surface uh, regime. One of the key features about Lightning 5 is the ability to track multiple moving ground targets, as well as multiple air targets. So it's effectively now becoming a peer sensor alongside the radar. So uh, Brimstone very good against moving targets, so you now have a very effective, very flexible means of, uh, of engaging a range of targets. Uh, looking into the uh, future a little bit more, then we're trying to make sure that Typhoon remains flexible and capable uh, across any battle space and uh, having full freedom of manoeuvre and full freedom of access. So we're looking to integrate in the near term the Spear, which is a long-range uh, strike weapon. And as well as the Spear strike weapon, we have the Spear EW, which is actually an electronic war warfare. So Spear EW would go off and degrade uh, the situational awareness of the surface-to-air missile systems. And you can see that indicated here by that missile engagement zone going yellow. Uh, a lot of these systems have very effective uh, defense mechanisms. So doing a multi-axis simultaneous attack from typhoons would uh, almost certainly overwhelm those defenses, particularly in conjunction with the jamming from the spear. And then against the more strategic SAMs with layered defenses, you would look for a multiple attack using multiple spears, multiple spear EW, alongside Storm Shadow for the really high value nodes that you need to uh, take down. And alongside that, using the electronic attack capabilities of the latest E-Scan radar. So all of those things coming together. As well as those strike capabilities, it's important that Typhoon remains survivable. So right now we have something called coordinated countermeasures. Uh, against mobile or fixed SAMs or air threats, the pilot has very good situational awareness of the threats out there. So in the helmet, he gets this kind of display, tells him where the threat is. Heads down, the defensive aid system tells it's identified and located that threat. Onboard jamming starts automatically. The towed radar decoy deploys automatically. Initial layers of defense. As the threat system uh, increases, uh, maybe going from a surveillance to a tracking capability, then uh, in cockpit I get an indication of that and again the maneuvers or the, uh, the counters from the aircraft automatically assist the pilot. So as I get engaged, in cockpit I'll get an audio warning as well as a change in indication and the green arrow tells me that the system is countering effectively that threat. I'll get a maneuver cue so the pilot is automatically given a cue as to where to maneuver Chaff is automatically released, as well as uh, expendable active RF electronic decoys, what's known as the Bright Cloud, and that's an operational test right now. So lots and lots of different layers of defenses that keep the pilot safe, that means the Typhoon has full freedom of action, can penetrate and reshape any battle space now and going forwards into the future. Looking at some of the campaigns that you have going on internationally, uh, things like survivability and strike is going to be very, very important. So how do you feel this is going to be helping you as a, as a unique selling point for your, 
for, for the Eurofighter Typhoon moving forward? Yeah, so we've been integrating Striker 2 for the last two years now, and, and it's really cutting edge. I mean, uh, it is without doubt the best helmet display out there. That is going to drive down pilot workload. It, it gives me a much uh, more flexible way of interacting with all of the information that's coming into the cockpit. So Striker 2, Spear, Spear EW, these are cutting edge sensors, uh, human machine interface changes and weapons that give me a, a really a, a fantastic capability in keeping Typhoon relevant. And that uh, longevity is, is also another question that's coming up as well, is it, how can we keep that uh, um, system going and um, spiraled in terms of development upwards into the future. So how do you see that working towards this? Yeah, well, there's, there's a couple of things. The first is the baseline, that airframe engine combination with Typhoon we really got right. That is a great combination. So I foresee a life of Typhoon in the way that the F-16 has been very successful, you know, e even to now. Uh, and it's, but it's 30 years newer technology in terms of the composites and engine. We're upgrading the engine for even greater thrust. One of the key things is being able to respond rapidly. So the E-Scan radar is going to be fully missionware. So every few months we're going to iterate what used to be software with new missionware. That E-Scan radar is going to have a, introduce a lot of novel techniques, so radar waveforms that we've been developing over the years in the, in the UK and with our partners, and that's going to give us a great capability. So the ability to flexibly upgrade our sensors and the weapons, that's what's going to keep Typhoon relevant and capable going forward. And, and I foresee another 30, 40 years life on the jet. And uh, another contentious issue has been mission data and uh, countries' ability to utilise their own mission data and generate their own mission um, data specifications. So is this something that's going to be helped going forward? Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's a great point. I mean, mission data, the, the, the flexibility of that gives me a huge ability in Typhoon to respond rapidly. We can, you know, detect new threats, new waveforms, and in hours turn that data around and have a new counter to that, as opposed to people who have to wait months on other jets. But that involves... Uh, uh, you know, good uh, intellectual property and good defense intelligence to really feed that mission data. So what we do is we work closely with our partner nations and closely with our uh, other customers to make sure that we can share as much of our national data as possible and as much of our national techniques as possible to keep them safe and effective moving forwards. Paul, thank you very much for your time. Okay, great.